Welcome to Just a Minute. Hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute waltz fades away, once more it is my pleasure not only to welcome our many listeners, but also the four exciting individual and humorous talents who this week are going to pit their wits and display their verbal dexterity as they play Just a Minute. We welcome that flamboyant and extrovert comedian and actor Tony Slattery, the stand-up comedian and all-round performer Stephen Frost, the actor and theatre producer Derek Nimmo, and the restaurateur, politician, writer, racehorse owner, you name it, he's done it, Clement Freud. Would you please welcome all four of them? And as usual, I am going to ask them to speak on a subject that I will give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. Beside me sits Anne Osborne, who's going to help me keep a score. She's going to hold the stopwatch, and she'll blow a whistle when the 60 seconds are up. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the St. James Concert Hall in the delightful and lovely island of Guernsey. And uh, we are going to begin the show this week, who better, yes, Tony Slattery. Tony, will you go on the subject of the gate crasher, starting now? Well, interesting enough for those listening at home, there are, in fact, in this concert hall, 350 gate crashers. <laughs> because none of <laughs> I'm so sorry. Clement Freud challenge almost immediately, yes. And we can recognise the hesitation. Clement, you get a point for a correct challenge. You take over the subject. It's the gate crasher, and there are 51 seconds starting now. Technically, I suppose a gate crasher is someone who goes to a party to which he or she has not been invited. My advice to one of those people, should there be a... <laughs> Tony Slattery, you got back in again. Yes, it was. You got back in again. You have 40 seconds to continue, starting now. You've just reminded me, one of the most literal pieces of gate crashing I ever did was on my first driving test. I happened to fail it because when the chap said, when I hit the dashboard, you have to do an emergency stop, I put it into reverse and drove into someone's garden. This, and this is absolutely true, and I, in fact, failed the test. And what's more... Uh, Derek Limo. Challenge. No test. You Two were tests. doing the test. They yes. Were. So, a correct challenge from you, Derek. You get a point, of course, for that. There are 22 seconds still available. The subject is the gate crasher. If you're going to a society party which you're attempting to gate crash, I would advise you to go dressed, if you're a man, as a major in the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. <laughs> Nobody will ever question your apparel. You'll be welcomed in, sat down, given a glass of champagne or maybe something even strong, perhaps a whiskey and soda of that is the kind of tipple that you like. I did actually witness in Colombo last week. In this game, whoever is speaking as the whistle goes gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Derek Nimmo. Derek, it's Nibbles. Tell us something about nibbles in this game, starting now. I myself have never been a great nibbler. My wife, in fact, likes nibbles, and she has them strategically around the house. You'll go into one room, there'll be a bowl with some nuts within it. Perhaps another has crisps or even chips, and perhaps somewhere else there'll be... Uh, Stephen like Frost perhaps. challenge. Two, yeah, two perhaps. There were two yeah, perhaps, yes. 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 Right. Well, well, on the this. team. Able to keep going. Stephen, 44 seconds are available. You have a point for a correct challenge. Nibbles is with you, starting now. Last week, my pet cat died. It was called Nibbles. <laughs> and of course, the whole family was very sad. It was my fault. I didn't think the microwave would kill it. <laughs> but it was the only way to dry it after washing it. Nibbles was the family favourite. He used to come up to us when we were cooking and sit on the salad board and rub its bottom up and down. <laughs> making the food very unhealthy, but we loved that cat. <laughs> Clement Freud challenged you after that disgusting remark you made, and you've... Uh, Clement, what was your challenge? Repetition of ha. Of ha? <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> No, I, I don't think that was a correct challenge, Stephen. So you uh, have a point for an incorrect challenge. You have 21 seconds available for you on Nibbles starting now. Of course, we brought a new one and oh. named it Nibbles Two. Clement, I saw his challenge. Repetition, of course. Clement, 20 seconds available for you on Nibbles starting now. Nibbles are an excellent thing to take a party that you're gate trashing. Bring a bowl of nibbles and nobody will stop you at the door and say, have you been invited? Chips, crisps, nuts, pretzels... Whatever there is, 
in the container with nibbles will give you free entry to the... And there it got in. Repetition of entry. Yes, you did mention entry before. And you... Oh, there's two seconds left, Derek. So, nibbles, two seconds. I really love having my ear <laughs> Right, at the end of that round, uh, Derek Nimmo, speaking of the win, got the extra point. He's equal with Clement Freud in the lead. Stephen Frost and Tony Slattery follow in that order. And, Stephen, we'd like you to take the next round. Barcode. Tell us something about it in this game, starting now. Next time you go shopping to the supermarket, take a black felt-tip pen with you. And when you pick up the products you wish to purchase, put a line down the barcode and you'll find you'll get it much cheaper than originally priced. <laughs> I've been doing this for years and getting away with it, mostly with my cat food for nibbles, who I no longer have, of course. But when I first bought that feline... <laughs> Uh, Tony, you challenge. A little hesitation. Ah, yes, I definitely. 39 seconds, Tony. Another point to you, and barcodes with you, starting now. If, like me and Nicholas, you frequent singles bars... <laughs> I've often thought the best way to break the ice with strangers is to have a certain barcode, by which I mean you wear badges on which you put your favourite topic of conversation. For instance, with the aforesaid chairman, it would be alcoholism. With me, it might be gingham frocks. The point is that if you have a... Uh, Stephen Frost, you challenge. Gingham frocks, deviation. <laughs> <laughs> so, 15 seconds with you, Stephen. Barcode starting now. If you cut out the barcodes from all packets of cornflakes or any type of cereal in the supermarket and stack them end-to-end, -end, you'll... <laughs> oh, what <laughs> end-to-end? <laughs> Oh, it's an impossible game, yes. So many phrases are repetitious. And Clement, you got in first. You got a point for that, of course. And barcodes back with you. Six seconds starting now. One of the most interesting things about barcodes uh, is... Stephen... Uh, the Asian barcodes aren't interesting. <laughs> well, they, perhaps they are to Clement. I've got to be fair within the rules. Yeah, they would be to Clement. Yeah, yes. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very not, strictly speaking. Deviating within the rules of just a minute, so still with you, Clement. Three seconds, barcode, starting now. When evening comes, I never tire. Clement got the next point at the end of the round. He's also taken the lead, and he begins the next round. Clement, the information highway, that is the subject. Tell us something about it in uh, just a minute, starting now. I'm not tremendously conversant with the information highway, but for the record, if you want to email me, the number is fr.point/barcode.uk. <laughs> no comment. I have a typewriter which is not going to survive the millennium because one of the ratchets has dropped off. Uh, <laughs> uh, a strange thing happened. Clement, you actually challenged yourself there. Hesitation. Hesitation, yes. 33 seconds, starting now. If you drive up the motorway, you will find all sorts of information on that highway. Turn left, no stopping, kill, RAC... Stephen, what is... Kill? It? Kill? <laughs> yes, you're... Just kill? Speed kill. Just get out of your car and shoot somebody. <laughs> Just west, west of Dublin. <laughs> west of... Kill? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's a, it's a town. It's a town. Oh, uh, but oh, it's not on the it's not on the hi not on the motorway. The highway. Oh, yeah. highway. On the highway. All right. Oh, so sure clever, Clement. Oh, so Clement. Around. Yes, you justified it, Clement. Right. Another point to you. Twenty-four <laughs> seconds. The information highway is starting now. No information. Uh, Derek, challenge first. Well, it hasn't any information. So. It is right. Twenty-three seconds. The information highway, Derek, starting now. I must say it has changed my life considerably because I put on plays in places like, say, Jakarta, and if I want to send a poster down the line full of the design and colour, I do use the information highway. And somehow or other, why it works, I have no idea. Sitting on a desk in Indonesia, out it pops, and they can then print the artwork from it. It is an app. Absolute miracle. I can't get. <laughs> Derry was speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point for doing so. He's moved forward, but he's still trailing our leader, Clement Freud. Tony, it's your turn to begin the thousand and one nights. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us something about them in just a minute, starting now. 
Like the Song of Solomon, The Thousand and One Nights is a hymn to physical love. Euterpe and agape are the classical terms therein. In The Thousand and One Nights, many positions are tried. And even when boredom sets in, Nicholas, I'm looking at you here, the main thing is that invention, physical passion, floods the scene and everyone is alight with the joys of rubbing up against each other. I'm I'm talking about nibbles now, the cat. <laughs> yes, anything goes. There are no rules in this world of a thousand and one nights. The Arabic term for a thousand and one nights is a thousand and one nights. <laughs> That's because in, in oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, that's the longest anybody's gone for a while. We went for 46 seconds. Oh, well, well done. But unfortunately, you stumbled there. Clement Freud got in first. 14 seconds with you, uh, Clement. The, the Thousand and One Nights starting now. A Thousand and One Nights is a rather higher figure than you tend to get at investitures. Nevertheless, you go to Buckingham Palace, having been summoned by Her Majesty, who appears with a sword, which she claps upon your shoulder, saying, Arise, Sir 987. Clement Freud was speaking as a whistle and gained that all-important extra point to move him forward. And Derek, we move to you now to begin the next round. The subject, Daddy Longlegs. Tell us something about it in this game, starting now. Daddy Longlegs is a book written by Jean Webster in about 1903, I think. It is a very charming book about a little girl who's an orphan. Uh, Stephen Frost. About, about like yes, and a book as well, right. Uh, uh, Stephen, you've got in with 51 seconds available. Daddy Longlegs, starting now. When I was at school, we used to catch them on the playing fields and pull their legs off one by one <laughs> and make them spin <laughs> around. You, you one by one. What's the matter with you? End to end. End to end. One by one. You're, you're, you're a great phraseology man, yeah. aren't you? End to end. One yeah. by yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Forty-five well. seconds. Back with you is the subject of Daddy Longlegs, Derek. Starting now. One of the governors of the school noticed a particular girl and thought that she would benefit from a better education. So she was sent away to a college in a different part of America, and then she was told to write a letter once a week to this man called Smith. It wasn't his real name, but she wasn't allowed to what he would know what he was called, so she had to call him Daddy Longlegs, and that she did. And many years later, many letters, uh, many, 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 Stephen, many, 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 <laughs> many, 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 the best thing to do with these insects, if you catch them when they get on your nerves... <coughs> Derek Challenge. Repetition of catch. You talked about catching them before, yeah. I'm afraid. Derek, <laughs> you got in first. 18 seconds, Daddy Longlegs starting now. The crane fly, which is the official name of the Daddy Longlegs. Right, Stephen Frost, you've challenged. What is your challenge? It was a bit of a slur and a hesitation. Well, I'm sure you're right, so yes. take the subject. <laughs> On one of the words. 14 seconds, Daddy Longlegs, Stephen, starting now. When they fly into an easterly wind, they get mesmerised by the noise passing over their antennae. This has been scientifically proved by the famous Professor... Derek Challenge. I haven't got antennae. Uh, well, I might have a satellite dish or something. Yes. <laughs> so, Cables. sorry, Probably. correct challenge, deviation, four seconds. With you, Derek, starting now. Hello, Daddy Longlegs. Uh, uh, Tony Challenge. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Sh Jen, uh, you've been challenged by Tony Slattery. I'm sorry, I, was that deviation from the English language? I didn't understand the first word. <laughs> Oh! And deviation from Derek's normal delivery as well. So, Tony, you've got him with two seconds on Daddy Longlegs, starting now. Pull their legs off and they can make really good false eyelashes. <laughs> At the end of that round, uh, Clement Freud is still in the lead. And Stephen Frost, it is your turn to begin. <laughs> the subject... The human condition. Now, this own? could be a subject yes. really chosen for you, isn't right, it? Of course. Tell us something about the human condition in 60 seconds, starting now. Well, I was having a long discussion about the human condition with my friend Stephen Fry the other day. <laughs> and he said to me, if you go on that programme just a minute, I'll tell you what to say. World, peace, war, what's it all about? Why do humans fight? Why do they make up and then start the argy-bargy again? This is part of the human condition. That's what he told me, and I've said it to you. And I think we can all... <coughs> Clement Freud challenge. It's repetition. Yes, but which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> repetition. I have to know, because you might say something which he didn't repeat. 
repetition of what Stephen Fry told him. <laughs> that is a clever challenge to get you a bonus point, but you didn't actually challenge him for the sum of the words he repeated, so Stephen, you still keep the subject. Oh, and you have 35 seconds to continue on the human condition starting now. In the great scheme of things, when whatever God is looking down upon us, they must think, why are these people doing what they do? And I can only reply, I don't know either. And this is part of the human condition, not knowing why we're here. And uh, Derek, why? give him a challenge. There's no why. Yeah. There's a lot of whys there, yes. Yeah. Derek, 19 seconds. The human condition starting now. Two weeks ago, I was in Sri Lanka, and I've been a terrible battle on the Jaffna Peninsula. And this is what I really mean by the human condition, how people can slaughter each other like that. 2,000 young men were killed, some tiger from Tamil and the others were ordinary soldiers. And as I was going to the airport, leaving the country, to all... <laughs> well, on that rather sad note, Derek Nimmo brought that round to an close. Clement, it's your turn to begin. The subject, patois. Tell us something about that subject. <laughs> Starting now. An interesting French nursery rhyme goes Patois, Patois, homme du boulanger. Uh, <laughs> <fait> moi, uh, <laughs> Tony I'm sorry, I think there was a little hesitation. There. Yeah, there was a definite. Uh, right, Tony, 52 seconds. Patois, starting now. One of my favourite jokes about South African patois is of course I've got a grudge, where would I put my car? <laughs> That isn't, of course, the generally understood term uh, when you're talking about patois. For instance, cockney patois often sounds a bit like the language I was talking about earlier. For instance, hurry up with those fish and chips, I've got a train to catch. That's what people used to say. <laughs> <laughs> So the person yeah. laughing loudest at that last remark was Tony Slattery, the manager of Liberty. Sorry. Sorry. What has what has corpsed you of your own? <laughs> oh. I thought you were going to go into your impersonations of the East Enders characters, which you do so well. Oh, thank you. I'll remember yeah. that for next time. Yes. <laughs> uh, Clement, you got in first. Twenty-two seconds. Patois, starting now. Batter cake, patois, baker's man. Make me a cake as quick as you can. Was really what I was going to say on the subject of patois. It's also a means of... Derry Nimmo challenge. Um, hesitation. Hesitation, I yes. Must. Nine seconds, patois, with you, uh, um, Derek. Well, when I'm in south-west France, the Dordogne, one of my favourite things to eat is patois de foie gras. It is absolutely <laughs> delicious. On the other hand, if you're travelling in the Cyclades... <laughs> Derek Nimmo got that extra point for speaking as the whistle went and our two most experienced players of the game, he and Clement Freud, are now equal in the lead. And Tony Slattery, your turn to begin. And the subject here is tax haven. I can't imagine why that has come up in front of this particular audience, but talk on the subject if you can, starting now. Well, of course, etymologically speaking, the word haven is a simple linguistic constriction of the word heaven. So I imagine a tax haven is a place where tax inspectors and VAT men sit around on fluffy clouds with long white beards, playing harps and saying lovely things to you like, you owe me no money at all, and here's a lovely little song. Another tax haven... Uh, Stephen Frost challenge. Two lovelies. There were two lovelies, oh, yes. Yes, so tax havens with you, Stephen Frost. Uh, 40 seconds, starting now. The best place to keep your money without paying tax is under your bed. Because have you ever seen a queue outside a mattress? I think you'll find that that is the easiest... Uh, Derek Nimmo challenge. Sorry, now, it was a great mistake. I thought he was going to pack up, but he suddenly came talking. I he, was going to <laughs> he had an agonised, constipated look on his face, and I thought he was going to stop, but he didn't. I apologise. That's not quite You get an extra point. Thank you very much. No, <laughs> That's the spirit of the game to be played. 30 seconds. Stephen, on Tax Haven, with you starting now. Of course, none of us here need a Tax Haven because we don't get paid enough by the BBC for doing this. Uh, Clement Freud Challenge. I'm sorry, but BBC is... Um... Oh, yes, BBC. <laughs> Take it down. Right, 26 seconds with you, Clement, tax haven starting now. I would like Tony to talk about East Enders a lot. Tony, you've challenged. <laughs> that was clever, you challenged and then pressed your buzzer. Um, 
So, uh, the tax havens with you, back with you, Tony, and how many seconds? 20, starting now. Yes, a little known fact is that the East End of London is one of the most popular tax havens. It's where they all talk like this, I've got to get out of this bloody square, it's doing my head in. <laughs> Leave it, it's family. <laughs> uh, Tony... The audience think you're applauding because they saw you pick up your buzzer and buzz yourself there. I think it was deviation from the subject. <laughs> right, Tony, you challenge yourself, you've got a correct challenge, you. and you have eight seconds on Tax Haven starting now. Well, Guernsey is a tax haven in the way that... <coughs> Stephen Frost I'm going to go for hesitation there. Why? But, uh, he, he said it in and and... Yeah, 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 I think there was a bit of hesitation. Yeah. You're very generous. <laughs> so, Stephen, five seconds on Tax Haven starting now. One of the best places that's known as a tax haven in this whole wild world, of course. <laughs> well, for those interested in points, Stephen Frost got a number in that round. He's moved forward, and in descending order, with only one point separating them all, it is Clement Floyd, Derek Nemo, Stephen Frost and Tony Slattery, so it's still very close. Derek, the next subject is buffer. We'd love you to take it and talk on it starting now. Sometimes a buffer state can be very useful to the country which actually is the buffer. For instance, Thailand. It was never colonised or occupied because it stood between British, Burma, India and Malaya on one side and Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia, which were French, on the other. And that was greatly to their benefit. I myself am rapidly becoming a silly old buffer. Now, it's not something which I contemplated some years ago when I started doing this programme, but I find myself... I still stand up and let ladies sit uh, down. Uh, Stephen... Uh, to myself, there. It was to I myself, yes. To myself. Yeah. 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 Stephen, you're doing well. Right, you've gone in there. 30 seconds on buffer, starting now. At the end of the railway line, you normally get two big buffers to stop the train going out of the station where it shouldn't. Because that's the terminal, you see, where they stop to let the passengers off. And if the buffer wasn't there, there would be an almighty accident, which we wouldn't want, would we? <laughs> so the buffer is in place to keep the train on the track, on the rails, on, 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 on. <laughs> Stephen, you may struggle, but they love the way you do it. And uh, Derek got in first. Uh, four seconds. Buffer with you, Derek, starting now. An old moustache, well-worn uh, Clement, challenge you. We've had old before. You've mentioned old. You've said about your old buffer, you said before. Now you said old moustache. So, Clement, you've got him with one second on buffer starting now. A wedding buffer is where you... <laughs> Clement has now taken the lead, just ahead of Derek Nimmo and Stephen Frost, and then comes Tony Slattery. And Stephen, your turn to begin. The subject, a trip to the dentist. Tell us something about that painful experience for so many of us, starting now. The last time I made a trip to the dentist, he said to me, sit down and open wide, know your mouth. It got off on the wrong foot, but at least we got to know each other. <laughs> Rinse this out and I'll have a look. And he found, right at the back of my mouth, an ingrowing... What, what are they called? <laughs> T toenail? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you challenge. I think it was hesitation. I think it was hesitation, yes. 38 seconds. Tell us about a trip to the dentist starting now. Coincidentally, instead of dental floss to pick bits out between my teeth, I use Stephen's in growing toenails. <laughs> and they're very useful. Funnily enough, this is true. The last time I went to the dentist, I had an accident in that I had one of my wisdom teeth taken out and the dentist actually severed the lingual nerve, which means half of my tongue is numb and I keep biting it and my mouth keeps filling with blood. That's a nice little jolly tale, isn't it? And I just thought I'd share it with you. The anaesthetic they use at the dentist is something called lidocaine, which is not the same as the illegal drug cocaine, which of course is a controlled substance. No, the aforesaid pharmaceutical... Tony Snattery is showing off his university education with all that stuff about drugs and... Uh... <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, actually. <laughs> oh, I think I see the time. This could be, I think it will be, actually, the last round. So, it's still neck and neck for those interested in scores. Clement, it's your turn to begin, and the subject is showmanship. Tell us something about that subject in just a minute, starting now. I think a very good instance of showmanship is someone who was asked to speak for one minute on a trip to the dentist without hesitation, deviation or repetition. 
and does it as well as does the gentleman sitting on my right, whose name, and I'm spinning this out a bit because <laughs> I have to go on for nearly a minute. Is Derek Nimmer challenge. Repetition a minute. You mentioned a minute before. I'm sorry, Clement. So, Derek, you've got in there. 39 seconds available. Showmanship starting now. What the English theatre needs today are more showmen. There's not enough showmanship. Now, I wanted to ban uh, the Clement Roy challenge. There was grammatical deviation. Oh, what was the... the, the, the... Um, what the English theatre need. <laughs> when... <laughs> what the English theatre really needs, I said. I think you said need, but it doesn't yes, really matter. Yes, yes. I think it was sort of colloquially. We all knew what he meant. Oh, is, is, it, the, is, is this a new rule now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Listen, I haven't done this for a long time, but I will put oh, it to the no, superior no, no, wisdom no, no, and judgment no, 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 of this boring. delightful audience here in oh, St. James's boring, Concert boring, Hall in boring. Ghent. <laughs> if you agree with Clement's challenge, you Ooh. cheer for him, and if you disagree, you boo against him, and you all do it together now. <laughs> Clement, they're with you. And they obviously noticed the grammatical error on Derek's part, so 21 seconds available for you, Clement, on showmanship, starting now. There is no business like showmanship. <laughs> it's a song which I have sung in many theatres all over the world, especially in Thailand, but also in Cambodia and Vietnam. <laughs> Exeter, Plymouth, uh, Tony Stafford to challenge. Um, hesitation, I think. And hesitation. Uh, yes, and I, I don't I think for a minute he stood up in theatres in Cambodia and Thailand singing, you know, there's no business like showmanship. <laughs> Tony got him with two seconds to go. The end of the last round, showmanship. Give us a bit of it, Tony, starting now. The hymn of showmanship is everything's coming up roses. As I said a friend ago, this was to be the last round, and indeed it is. So let me give you the final situation. Uh, Stephen Frost and Tony Slattery, who have not played the game quite as much as the other two, but they are so good at it, they finished equal in third place, very apt. But only two points behind Derek Nimmo, and the equal number of times of playing the game is Clement Freud. This time, Clement Freud has just won by two points. You are the winner this week, Clement. <laughs> So, it only remains for me to say thank you to our four delightful players of the game, Clement Floyd, Derek Nimmo, Stephen Frost and Tony Slattery, and I thank Anne Osborne for keeping the score for me and blowing her whistle so magnificently and with such style. We also thank the man who created this game, Ian Messiter, and also our producer, Chris Neal, who produces and directs the show with such efficiency, and to all our listeners who have tuned in, we hope you'll once more enjoy just a minute. Until then, from all of us, goodbye!